Well, um, out of all the messages that I have preached um, in the or 10, 12 years of doing ministry, this passage right here is one that it's not like I don't want to preach it, but I know that you don't want to hear it. To tell you the truth, um, last night I was tossed and turning bed last night, and I was literally one of the Jacob things. I was fighting with God and saying, God, do you really want me to deliver this message as you want, as you're kind of instructing me to? And I could not go to sleep until I submitted to God and said, you just preach David the way that God wants me to. So, congratulations, you're here at one of the toughest messages to hear in your life. But I guarantee you the following. If you're not worried about the person to your left or to your right, and you worry only about yourself and what God wants to do, your life will be changed for the glory of God. So do this, do this, do this. I want you to look to the person to your left or to the right and says, I don't care about you today. Go ahead. Now look to the other side and say, I don't care about you today. Okay, pause. All right, and listen, listen. God, we care only about what you have in store for us today. Because God, this message is not politically correct, but it's godly correct. We give you the praise and the honor for it. I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. As a youth pastor, as a pastor, I've had the opportunity and the curse at the same time to counsel, talk to people that have just had an affair with somebody. They had just had an affair. They come into my office and said, Dave, I've screwed up. What do I do? Uh, I've had an affair. Uh, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do um, sexually in, in my life. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they look at me and said, I'm sorry. And they're like, don't say sorry to me. Say sorry to God. Say sorry to the, your husband or your wife. Sorry to me doesn't matter. Sorry to God and that other person does. And here's the tough thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's hard. It is the hardest thing in the world to be a pastor. And to say this, obey the word of God and you'll be okay. Just do what the Bible says. Listen to God and what? Do what it says. It should be the easiest job in the world that I can say, here's the instruction manual. I'm going to need no bonbons and eat my, my heart out and come Sunday morning and morning and preach. But I'm telling you, it's one of the hardest jobs in the world because I'm teaching God's Word. I said, this is God's Word. And then all of a sudden, you and I go out and do whatever the crap we want to do. You with me? You with me? So I'm going to say this. There are many of you right now that are having an affair. And I'm not going to call out names. I know who you are. I know you're having an affair. I, I know you are. And it's not a physical affair. It's a spiritual affair. The Holy Spirit of God desires an intimate relationship with you and with me. But we're having an affair with other things. And other people. Welcome to Cabot's Church. <laughs> James chapter 4 and verse right, verse 1. James chapter 4 and verse 1. I'm going to exegete the passage. In other words, I'm going to go right down through this passage. I'm going to stop and I'm going to preach about it. So you can't come to me and say, Dave. You said the following. No, I didn't say the following. The Word of God said the following. There's the Holy Spirit of God that is trying to convince your heart. You with me? Yeah. So sir, I'm being dead serious. Let this not be one of those days that you come and you do church. If you come to do church, get out. We don't want you here. 
but God does. Sit there and don't worry about your other person. Worry about yourself and what God has to teach you. Don't put the blinders on. Don't worry about what you're going to eat afterwards. Don't worry about how cold or hot it is. Don't worry how, how articulate I am. You worry about what God wants you to hear today, and I guarantee you it will change your life. Amen. James chapter 4, starting verse 1. What causes five men quarrels among you? Don't they come from the desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have it, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. Let's pause right there. Let's just think about that. You and I fight with other people because we don't get what what? We want. Is that true? Yes. It's saying right here, you quarrel and fight with other people. You quarrel and fight with God because you don't get what you want. The desires that are in your heart are sinful and are wrong if they have anything contrary to do with what? The Bible. God's Word. And it says here clearly, you quarrel and fight because you do not want to get. You kill. How many of you guys ever killed somebody? Probably nobody. But if you hate your brother or sister, it's like you're murdering somebody, the Bible says. You quarrel and fight because you do not get what you want. And it's tough. And you, I like what it says, you covet. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, coveting other people's stuff causes you to fight. Causes you to not do what you want to do. So the point, point is this, adulterous desires result in fighting. Adulterous desires Result in fighting. Here's, a, here's an interesting interesting story. Um, I got a letter in the mail from about a month ago. It's from the government. And by the way, Catholic Church is a tax exempt 501c umbrella church. Okay? When I got the letter in the mail, I'm like, who are you, government, to tell me, a nonprofit person, what to do? They said, you are not allowed to meet in the building that you are in right now. You need to go get a special use permit and all this crap and everything. And, and inside me, by the way, there's like two or three churches that have met somewhere in this building. So we just thought that we can as a church to meet. So inside of me, I wanted to quarrel and to fight with the government. Many of you came up to me and said, just fight it. Just put up billboards and say, government, you suck, type of thing. All right? And many of you came to me and said, just fight it, fight it, fight it. They also want us to take down our yard signs. And I said, we're going to fight it, we're going to fight it, we're going to fight it. And then all of a sudden, I had, I had this God moment where God kind of like kicked me in my butt. And God simply said this, submit yourself. For the Lord's sake, to every authority instituted among men, whether to kings or supreme authorities, or to governors who are set by him to punish those who do wrong and commit those who do right. Check that, check that. When God told me that, I just said, forget you, God, I want to fight. Because why did I want to fight? Selfish. I'm like, who the crap are they to tell me and us what we are supposed to do? Isn't this a free country? And I was, I was ticked off. I really was. But then all of a sudden, God gave me this verse. It's like, ah, man. So I went through all this government stuff, and, and we're still in the process of January where I have an a, a official meeting and all this stuff. I'm like, why do I have to spend $200 of God's money for this? Why do I have to fill out a thousand pages of paperwork and this and this and this? Why? Because the authority above me said to do so. And anything that we do that is contrary to Scripture, even though I don't like this, is because of our evil desire. And it goes across the board. We fight with our spouse, we fight with our boyfriend, we fight with our children, we fight with the government, we fight with our bosses, because we don't get what we want. You with me? Yes. Okay. Great, <laughs> go ahead. 
James chapter 4 and 2b. This is huge. This is huge. This is amazingly huge. It says this. The just after the quarrel of Christ says, You do not have because you do not ask God. Verse 3. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with what? Wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Okay, two things. Very important here is this. With prayer. How many of you guys, I'd all raise my hand early and say this. Many times your pastor doesn't even talk to God about decision because I think I know what is best. How many of you guys are with me? You know, you think you know what is best, so you can make a decision, a big decision, without even asking God. Okay? Alright, so half of us do, the other half are only the, the other half. Right? Right. But listen, listen to me. We do not ask God. So what, what happens? We do not get. But then he says clearly this. He says, when you ask. So you're asking then. You're asking. You do not receive. You do not receive the answer that you or I want because we ask with the what? Problems. You and I, when we come to God, if we are adamantly sinning, against God, He is going to look at you and say, that is not what I want for you, child. First, repent, come to me, and see the blessings that I'm going to pour out on your life because you're doing what I tell you to do. You with me? Yes. You first should ask because you're prideful enough to think that you do not need to ask the God who's able to do it. The second thing, you come to God and say, you know what? Uh -uh. I, I can't do it by myself, so I'm coming to you. How many of you guys can honestly say you have asked God and you have not received an answer that you would like? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's because of this verse. Matthew 7, 9-12, it says, Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or, if he, if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If then, though, you are evil... How many of you guys are evil in this room? Alright? Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? God has not answered your prayer requests. Because you have asked, first, because you have sinned in your life that you have not asked God for forgiveness for. And the second thing is this. You are asking God with the wrong motives. You're asking for something He does not want you to have because He knows you're going to do it for back to yourself. How is God going to give you something that all you're going to do is praise yourself and give to yourself? And I'm, I'm, this, is, this is going to hurt. Many of you guys are coming to me and saying, hey, my finances suck. I'm having family situations. I'm struggling with this and this and this. And I said, read your Bible and pray. And you're like, but Dave, I'm going to shut up. Read your Bible, submit to God, and pray and do what God wants you to do. And at that moment, watch. He'll do some amazing, amazing, amazing things. Amen. I guarantee it. Because now, as soon as you submit to God and do what He says, it's no longer bad motives, it's godly motives because you're doing everything that He wants you to do, not what you and I want to do. You with me? Wow. Okay, alright. Um, an illustration is, is this. There, here's point two under that um, is guilty pleasures result in the lack of communication with God. When I was in middle school, um, actually I think I was younger than that, I was a part of this youth group in, in Hong Kong. Um, and my parents, not very rich parents at all, missionary parents, um, they they would give me um, five um, Hong Kong dollars, which was like a dollar fifty back then, um, American dollars. So they would give me five dollars, and the, the whole youth group would go out to McDonald's afterwards, and it was awesome because I did not get a, I did not get a Coke, I did not get a cheeseburger. I wanted French fries. I wanted French fries with all the salt on it and everything. So my my friends um, that that were there, they were having all this other stuff, and I started. To their french fries and I was a chunky kid back then, I still am, but I was chunkier back then. So 
So I'm um, eating these french fries, and I'm loving it, my guilty pleasure, and, and wanted the french fries, right? I wanted the french fries. How many of you guys are McDonald's french fries lovers? Okay. Woo! I feel at home, that's good. All right, so I uh, wanted the french fries. But one large fry did not cut it. Sooner or later, my guilty pleasure wanted a second large fry, but only a dollar fifty, five dollar Hong Kong would not would not cut it. So every week, my parents had this ghetto picked out two door Honda car. It looked awesome, and, and back now, looking back now, it was a piece of crap. It really was. But back then, it was a ride. So. Um, my parents would, would, I would go out every single week um, that youth group starts, and I would run out to the car and say, Mom and Dad, I am running out to the car so that I can spend time with God in the car before we go. Okay? You got it? You got it? So here I am with my guilty pleasure, knowing it has nothing to do with God, and everything about what? Chris Wax. So here I am, I'm waiting in the car by my parents. Um, my parents kept five five dollar coins in the console of their other thing because that's what you pay tolls with to go around in Hong Kong. So I came out early to spend time with Jesus. I got the one, this one would do it. And I put it in my pocket and then sooner or later my parents would be like, man, I know I put five in here 30 minutes ago. Where did you go, David? They, they suspected something. But I said, I don't know. Why can't you keep care of your own money? I don't, I don't know. So all of a sudden, sooner or later, my parents watched me from the top, and they saw me starting to take one, and two, and three. And by the end, I was sick. Physically sick because of the French fries. My guilty pleasures prevented me and my family relationship to be close because when they found out that I stole from them, it separated the trust with my parents. It goes the same way with us as adulterous, sinful people. We want, so we will do anything we can to get. Ultimately, it will spread our relationship out with God. And God will be just one piece of the puzzle of our life. You with me? Amen. Okay. Then James gets down and dirty. All right? James chapter 4, in verse 4 through 6. This is where the rubber meets the road. You with guys with me first? You yes. with me? You with me? Now it gets really hot and heavy. Let me pray. God, right now is the time where you're going to speak to a lot of people. Again, may they not worry about themselves and their fear about other people, but may they worry about themselves and what they are doing in their adulterous lifestyle that grieves you, my King and my God. May Catalyst Church not be a group of adulterers, but may we be a group of Christ followers. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 4, you what people? The adulterous people. Adulterous. Adultery is this, loving somebody or something more than the one you're supposed to be loving. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship, not just love, but friendship, friendship with the world is what to God? Hatred to God. And I would say this in this room. If I, if I ask, if show had, how many of you guys hated God? Nobody, nobody in this room would be able to admit that they hated God. But according to this, let me see a show of hands. Let me see a show of hands. How many of you guys say, I enjoy, just enjoy? Not love, enjoy material things. You're a bunch of God haters. You're a bunch of God haters. Why? Because friendship, not just love, but friendship with the what? World. 
that's anything contrary to God, that's, that's the world. Anything contrary to God is the world. And who is the prince of the world right now? Satan. Satan. Satan's the devil, and he's a real being. He's a real creation. Don't think he's a figment of your imagination with horns and like a nice cool, cool tail. He's a beautiful creation created by God, sin, and he is ruling this world. And he was trying to pull you away from the love of God. And if you and I are God haters, we are Satan lovers. <laughs> Church. Anyone who chooses to be friends of the world becomes what? Enemies of God. I don't know about you, but God, the creator of the universe, I don't want to be on his bad side. If I'm on the bad side of God, I become his enemy, and even though God tells us to love his enemy, we're his what? Enemy. You and I are adulterous people because we have fleshly desires and we quarrel and fight with each other, but we need to quarrel and fight with the demons and the devils that are trying to distract you from Jesus. This is an amazing verse. Or do you think Scripture says without a reason, by the way, do you think anything that's written in God's Word would just throw it in there and say, ooh, that sounds good, and just throw it in there? Do you think everything in this word has a purpose? Yes. The answer is absolutely yes. Everything, everything, every jot or tittle, any, any, what, any small or big parts of the Bible is inspired by God and is useful for the following. Teaching us, rebuking us in righteousness. Okay. Do you think that scripture, without reason, that the spirit who causes to live, okay, let me read it again, or to you, Think the, the scripture says without reason that the spirit he causes to live in us envies intensely. But he gives more grace. That's what the scripture says. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Listen closely to me. This is crucially important. If you are truly, 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 truly a Christ follower, if you love Jesus and you say, Jesus died for my sins, I believe in Jesus, I commit my life to Jesus. You are, on, you are a child of God and He loves you very much. And He sends the Holy Spirit of God to indwell your life, to guide and to direct your life. And at any time we become enemies of God because of our adulterous life who loves the world so much more, the Holy Spirit inside of us becomes jealous for our attention. So again, Anytime you and I can introduce the Holy Spirit of God says, you know what? Why? You got me here. I love you. I'm jealous for you. I love that David Crowder song. It says, I'm jealous. God is jealous for us and for our attention. All right. So, so we've got really just so far. It's like, and it's been like, man, this, this has been like, um, um, attack on me. It's not an attack because the Holy Spirit of God, by this very second, inside your heart and inside your mind, is telling you what you're doing wrong. From any aspect that you're doing, God is trying to convict your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the question is, have you been listening? You have not been listening? You're an extreme adulterer. Because whenever God's word is preached, we need to listen to it and do what it says. Amen. Have you guys been honest to admit that you are in spiritual adultery right now? <coughs> I can remember your pastor. There's stuff I'm working on and I'm repenting. And I've repented. And you're like, okay, Dave, help me. What are some practical ways on how to get out of this adulterous conversation or adulterous life? Are you with me? Yeah. How many of you guys are saying, I know an adulterer, but help me get through it. Help me get out of it. How do you guys want to know how to get out of it? Okay, here we go. The Bible. Ah, huh, go figure. It tells you how to do it. <laughs> Verse 7. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
Breathe, mourn, well, change your laughter in the morning and your joy to bloom. Humble yourself, therefore, before the Lord, and He will lift you up. And you're like, wow, that's a lot. What, what does that mean? I'm going to illustrate it. All right? You ready? The first one is this. Submit to God. <coughs> Submitting to God is simply taking care of all your desires and saying, I don't give a crap about me. I give a crap about God. I care about God. Submit to God. Do what He tells you to do. Just like my government thing, I did not want to submit to the government authority. I do not. I'm a rebel at head. By the way, it, even on my wristbands, it says a renegade pastor. Even I wear this, it said, I do not want to submit to the authority of man. I want to submit to God. But God told me authority that He's already given is President Obama, is the, the government authority. I need to submit to them because God said so. So listen, the first thing is this. Wherever you are in your life, if you're not submitting to God today, you need to submit to God. Do what He tells you to do. And again, read your Bible. How do you know what God is telling you to do unless you read your Bible? I'm going to tell you that every week until you start reading it once a day. Read your Bible. Read plans with there. Read your Bible. How many guys have honestly read your Bible at least three times this week? Honestly. Good. Good, good, good. Thank you. How many guys say, you know what? I fell this week. I did not read my Bible this week. Thank you for honesty. Submit to God. Do what He tells you to do. The next one is this. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Imagine this. Imagine this. Uh, what does that scripture say? Uh, where is that? Okay, it says... Submit yourself then to God. Okay, so as soon as you submit yourself to God, not one of these for a weekend things, but as soon as you truly submit to God, you will automatically what? Resist the devil. Do you think the devil is more powerful than God the Creator? Not a chance. So why do we submit to Him and do what He tells us to do? If we need to submit to God and do what He tells us to do, and what will be the result of the devil? He will flee. As soon as you and I start doing what God wants us to do, the devil has no authority over you because you are a child of God. I'll tell you this. If anybody came up to my son and tried to pull him away from me, I will beat him. I will kill him. I'll do whatever I can to defend my child. You with me? I'll do anything I can in God's that way. But many times, he is defending us, defending us, defending us. And sooner or later, we speak with him back. And if my son, for example, he's a little kid, but if he's a teenager, if my son, I'll defend you and say, no to this, no to this, no to this. Because the Bible says so, that he sneaks out in the middle of the night, he gets arrested or gets in trouble, that's on him. As he went outside the authority of my submission. So I'm telling you right now, you need to submit to God. The devil will flee from you because you are a child of the living God. We forget that. The next one is this, repent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the, the, the topic for today, repent. What are you doing in your life that call, that needs, that sinning, that causes us to go outside of God's will? Whatever that is, whatever this is, is contrary to this. The Bible says repent. That it's, it's interesting. I was reading through John, and many of you guys are reading through the through the reading plan. It's really cool because John the Baptist came to this earth and he prayed, and he, he all he prays is repent, the kingdom of God is here. You, you read that, right? Repent, the kingdom of God is near. Turn from your ways. Do what God tells you to do. Because Jesus is coming. And then all of a sudden, John the Baptist is locked up in prison. Jesus continued the ministry. And Jesus, God, said the following. Repent, the kingdom of God is here. Let me tell you this. Jesus Christ is coming back. It's time to repent today because you don't know if you walk out of here, the trumpet could sound, Jesus could come back, and you're like, crap, I didn't repent, I didn't repent. Listen, today, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Repent. 
And this is this is a difficult one within our culture. We don't get very emotional. In my whenever I became a pastor, it, it gets really emotional. When one of you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are no longer a son of the devil, you are a son of God, and it, it, it makes me happy. It makes me emotional because you have received Jesus Christ. But are we grieving for our sins? The Bible of James says, turn your mourning, or turn your laughter into mourning, and turn your turn your happiness into, into wailing. In other words, are you grieving? Are you really sorry? It's one thing. I know Rachel and I get to fight sometimes. And Rachel's famous words, when I do something stupid, I come to her and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I repent. All right? That's a lot. But I repent. I'm sorry for what I've done to you or to my family or whatever else. I'm sorry. And her words have recently been, sorry's are just words. You prove to me that you want to change. I grieve inside my heart because I want to prove to her that I love her and I'm sorry. So I'll do whatever I can to the next one. Humble myself. I want to humble myself before my wife. I want to humble myself before God. And I love what Scripture says. God gives grace to the humble but opposes the what? Proud. Ladies and gentlemen, today is going to take a bunch of humility for you to submit to God. Resist the devil. Repent. And grieve. Are you sad? Are you about it? If you are a child of God and you have the Holy Spirit of God living inside you, and every single time you do anything that's wrong, anything that's wrong, you lie, cheat, steal, you covet, you, you have an adulterous mindset, he grieves inside of you, but you do not hear the Holy Spirit because you are so attracted to the world. You have friends of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day of repentance. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take you for a couple examples of how this looks like. Since we're talking about adultery, I'll, I'll talk about this in the very first one, just like two or three of them, to give you an illustration. So when I, when I, when I say this, think about what the Holy Spirit of God is trying to teach you. Because what I'm about to share might not relate to you, but at the same time, there's something that the Holy Spirit of God is telling you to repent from. Check this out. Any sexual sins. In other words, if you have a sexual relationship with somebody that's not your husband or your wife, you are committing sexual adultery, the Bible says. And you can say, okay, but I'm going to submit to God in every other aspect but that. What happens is you are not resisting the devil because when you're committing sexual adultery, you are not doing this. You are actually not resisting the devil. You're allowing him to control you. You make all the excuses in the world that you're going to submit to God, but this does not happen. You need to resist those temptations. Get married. Find somebody else. Find somebody that's willing to wait for you and you wait for them. Be willing to wait. Sexual morality. That goes with pornography. It goes with any sexual sin. You submit to God and say, no, I will not, by the same time, no, I will not do anything because I'm resisting the devil, but at the same time, submit to God and He will allow you to resist and then repent. Say, God, I know what the Scripture says. The Scripture says don't have any sexual sin in your life, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to submit to God even though I don't like it. The devil will be resistant and then you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to say, sorry, God, for my pornography. Sorry, God, for, for, for living with somebody. Or sorry, God, for having sexual sin outside of marriage. Whether you're old or young, no matter what. Resist the devil, repent today. <coughs> and you're saying, you're saying, I, I can hear your mind going, it's like, but it's just friends with benefits. <laughs> but it's just this, but it's just this. If at any time you and I think any differently and come up with an excuse and say that's a culture thing, you're not submitting to God, you're submitting to the devil. Repent today. By doing so, you'll grieve. And I'm telling you what, maybe you're grieving because you desire your sexual sin, but you need to grieve and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I want to get emotional about this because I'm really, 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 really sorry.
sorry. Grieve. How they come before God and say, God, I'm submitting to you. The devil will free, flee, and I'm going to repent today. I'm really, really, really sorry. I'm humbly coming to you and saying, I give you the authority of my life. So think about this, and here's another big issue. Your finances. The Bible clearly says, give God his money back. Give only 10% back to him. And this is what we do. We say, God, but I cannot afford it. God says, do it. You're saying, Dave, I don't, you don't understand my finances. There's a widow who came in in front of Jesus and all these rich people and gave her last little bit because the Bible said to. And she had nothing left. And Jesus said, that young lady, really old lady, she was more righteous than all of these Pharisees and Sadducees. Because she did what she was supposed to do. In your finances, are you submitting to God or are you coming up with excuses while you're not giving to God? Giving His money back to Him, and He's not asking for 100% back, He's asking for 10% back, and I guarantee you by doing this, He will bless you for it. Amen. In reality, if you don't, you are do what the devil wants you to do. Resist the temptation to say, my finances are my finances and God can have a penny here, a penny there. God wants you to resist the devil and by submitting to him and doing what he said, watch. Today, you need to repent and stop having adulterous conversation and relationships. Just, just check this out. You're, every, every single time that you give your money to anything else, other than to the 10% that God wants you to do, you are giving that 10% that belongs to God to a prostitute. Because you have an adultery with that 10% that belongs to God. And you and I, we take that 10% and say, it would be nice to pay for this, pay for this, pay for this. And at any time, at any time, you take that 10% and do what you want to do with it, it's like going to a prostitute. You want to a prostitute, you're going to waste that money. It's time to repent. By doing so, maybe you're going to grieve because you don't understand how God's going to take care of you. But I guarantee you, if you grieve and say, God, I need your help, prove. I love that Malachi says, test me with my finances. Grieve. And then humble yourself and come to God and say, I humbly come before you, God, I'm going to give you, I'm going to submit to you, I'm going to resist the devil, I'm going to repent. I'm going to come to you with grieving and the result is humility. The list can go on a thousand times, but if you want to know the steps today, the Bible says repent. Repent from your way and my way of doing adulterous life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a, a rose-colored glasses thing. Repent. Turn from your way. Submit to God. Resist the devil. All this should happen at the same time. I say, God, it's up to you. I'm sorry. It's you. It's you. It's you. And Kevin's church, I'm telling you, it's about Jesus. It's not about you. Yeah. The very first part of it simply says, you have fighting and quarreling because it's not about you. It's about your evil desire that causes you to grieve, causes you to be separated from God. I'm telling you right now, Catholic Church, it's time to repent. Jesus, right this very second, Holy Spirit of God, you know what is in these men and women's hearts. You know right now that God, my heart and your heart, grieve for them. It's like, God, why don't they just do what you want them to do? You, the creator of them, wants them to repent today. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is coming. And it's here actually right now because Holy Spirit of God, you live inside of us. Jesus, you're coming back. And I repent for my pride. I repent for my arrogance. I pray I repent for everything that hinders me, David Whitmore, from being used for you. So God, right now, 
Whatever you have laid on the men and women's heart, I pray that they will repent. God, you know my heart. Last night, you gave me a thought in my mind that says, no music. Because the music can become an emotional aspect of the service. And right now, it's not about emotion. It's about you. So God, right now, right now, I pray. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that whoever's in this room that has been touched in a little or big way and it's time to submit to you and repent. I pray right now that people right now will come up front, build, nail down at their, 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 their chair, go to the back, find a time when there's no music. And may nobody look around because you're the only one who's looking. God, repent and start this very second, God. So God, I'm calling people to repent. Repent from their sinful desires right now. God, we're nothing without you. In a second, God, we're going to meditate on the song. God, this repentance time does not stop, God. Whether it's big, whether it's small, all sin, God, separates us from your love. And I cannot, God, preach a message about repentance without expressing the grace that you provided for us on Calvary's cross. Jesus, you came to this earth as a blessed Son of God because you love us. Jesus, you came and died for us as sinners. Your holy, perfect word says that you demonstrated, you showed your own love for us, God, that while we were still sinners, Christ, you came and died for us. God, if there is truly someone in this room that has heard the gospel a thousand times but have not made it official with a relationship you, the time is now. God, if there's someone in this room that has, has never necessarily heard the gospel that Jesus, you came to this earth to die for us, after death, you were buried in three days, you resurrected from the dead, and you are living in heaven, saying the gift of salvation, the gift is done, all you have to do is have faith. I love what the Bible says, is 
by grace are you saved through faith. Nothing but we have done to give to God. So Holy Spirit, convict the hearts. If that is you in this room and you say, I desire a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you've gone to church a hundred times in your life, but today you want to make it real. You want to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I repent for my sin. I now submit to your ways and your grace. I humbly come before you, and the devil has no power on my life because I, mean, I want to become a son or daughter of Jesus. With nobody looking around at all, if you say you desire this relationship with Jesus, in your heart, I encourage you to pray this prayer. The prayer does not save you. It's Jesus that does. In your heart, just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Thank you for coming and dying for me. I believe you came, you died, and you rose again. Forgive me of my sins. I submit to Jesus, 